Obscurus tourist here. Today we are in the Apple Valley in California and I got my finest wares on as I head to Palm Springs. But before I do, I thought I'd stop and check out this concrete dinosaur abandoned theme park. At first, I just thought these were sea monsters peeking their heads out of the sand. But I think these are supposed to be brachiosauruses. Looks like one of them has gone and lost its head. And look, here's two of his friends, one of which is just starting to deteriorate. This last one, though, this one looks to be doing pretty well in solid condition. Not bad for something that's been sitting in the desert for half a century. Man down over here. Could this be a Stegosaurus? Poor guy. There are a lot of these random smaller dinosaurs strewn around and it would make a great guessing game as to what they are. Some baby dinos over here and oh, we've got another dinosaur that seems to have gone and lost its head. I passed this when I first walked into here and it looks kind of like a crocodile. Perhaps it could actually be an archosaur, which I believe is a group of dinosaurs that preceded the crocodilians. And this guy has completely fallen apart. Pull yourself together, buddy. This guy has definitely seen some better days. It's kind of crazy that this is all sitting here in a field smack dab in the middle of this quiet little neighborhood in the Apple Valley. And just up ahead is the superstar of this entire roadside attraction, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. A pretty funny and odd looking fellow, if I say so myself. Looks a lot friendlier than the murderous reputation that precedes him. And he actually looks like a pretty fun guy. So the idea of this place was conceived by a man named Lonnie Kaufman, who named it Dinosaur Swampland. He started work on the Swampland in the early 1970s and his dream, or was it an obsession, was to create a prehistoric miniature golf course. Kaufman then hired a man named Gregory L. Wicker, who was serving in the Air Force at the time, to help in the creation of his attraction in exchange for rent. Before coming here, I actually read a comment Wicker left on a message board lamenting his work. He basically said that if he knew the creations would have lasted so long, he would have done a much better job. Here you can actually see the internal construction of the dinosaurs, which is mostly made up of chicken wire, stucco, and some rebarb, which makes up the main skeleton with about a two inch layer of concrete poured over top. And in the end, Kaufman and Wicker would have painted these green to make them a little more lifelike. It's very impressive for the work of just two men. Here's a couple downed, I think you'd call them brontosauruses, or is it brontosauri? Or is it just brontosaurus? Kind of like how the plural of moose is just moose. Anyone know the answer? And here's another close up of the inner skeleton used for construction. It's very interesting because it looks like there is some sort of paper like material laid out over the chicken wire as a sort of base for the concrete before it was poured. I guess they should have shored up the necks a little bit more because it seems the dino heads are the first things to go. Apparently Lonnie Kaufman's initial plan for this place was to construct about 30 dinosaurs in total, but he and Gregory Wicker ended up building just 19 in various states of completion, along with about 30 amphibians. And it looks like someone has actually gone and smashed this one's head in. Terrible. Sadly, Kaufman had to abandon his dream in 1977. After spending nearly $10,000 working on the project, he left the area in 1982, a completely heartbroken man. He did, though, briefly open the property to the public for free and eventually tried to recoup some of his costs 
by selling the theme park and all of its sculptures for a grand total of just $34,000. Unfortunately, no one bit and his dream was dead. Now, this isn't the prettiest of landscapes around here, but I have to admit that it kind of reminds me a bit of Bedrock City, the Flintstones theme park up near the Grand Canyon in Arizona, and that is one of my favorites, if not my favorite theme park. It's now closed, but that's for another time. And it's interesting because I assume that all of the sculptures that were constructed in Bedrock City were built much in the same way as they were here. A lot less color here though. You can actually see just how close some of the houses are to the dinosaur swampland. What a wonderland it would have been to have grown up with this as your backyard. Though I can imagine that it would either have been the coolest thing in the world as a kid or the most terrifying thing in the world. And if you see that amphibious creature right up ahead, it seems to have retained a lot of its original green paint. And from what I've read, all the sculptures here would have looked like that once completed. I gotta say that I'm treading really lightly here because I was warned about the rattlesnakes. So I'm definitely being a bit cautious. It's something to keep in mind should you actually make the trek out here for a visit. Random desert tip for you. If you ever see one of these things, these are called teddy bear cholas and they are the cutest. Just don't ever touch them or even get close. They will jump at you and stick to you and they will mess you up. Cute, not quite deadly, but injurious. The bridge here is one of the holes you'd have played if this mini golf course was actually completed. In fact, it may even have been the 18th hole. And I think this place would have brought a lot of happiness to those who would have had a chance to visit had it ever been completed. And this little guy right here might be the saddest of all the dinosaurs here at the park. A pretty stark look into what the future holds for all of the sculptures here. I really hope you liked my visit to the abandoned concrete dinosaur theme park here in Apple Valley. For now, me, Obscurus Tourist, and T-Rex bid you adieu. So long and until next time, stay beautiful. I'll see you later.